You say only those who obey the will of God receive the way of everlasting life. Since we believed in the Lord, we've suffered much and paid much to spread the Lord's gospel. We've shepherded the Lord's flock, taken up the cross, and followed the Lord, practiced humbleness, patience, and tolerance. Are you saying we haven't been following God's will? We know that if we continue, we will become holy and be raptured to the kingdom of heaven. Do you mean our understanding and practice of God's word is wrong? That's right. Any who suffer and work for the Lord are obeying the Heavenly Father's will. When the Lord comes, we'll be raptured to the kingdom of heaven. Amen. Many people have the notion that if they labor, sacrifice for the Lord, or do good deeds, they are obeying God's will. But are these imagined notions of men after God's heart? Do they have a basis in God's word? Let's see what the Lord Jesus said. The Lord Jesus said, Not everyone that said to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that does the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, and in your name have cast out devils, and in your name done many wonderful works, and then will I profess to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you that work iniquity. From the Lord Jesus' words we can see that those who prophesy cast out devils and do many wonderful works in his name are the ones who suffer and do works for the Lord. They serve the Lord, it's true, that they devote all their time to him and behave very well. But why does Jesus call them those who work iniquity? How should we understand this? By man's notions, any who suffer and do works for the Lord and devote their time to him are obeying God's will. The priests and scribes and the Pharisees in Judaism also appeared very pious. They traveled far and wide to preach the gospel. So why did the Lord Jesus condemn them and also curse them? That's something worth reflecting on, isn't it? We can't determine obedience to God's will using the notions of man. True obedience to God's will refers to those who can obey God's works and words, practice God's words, follow God's commandments, and fulfill their duties according to God's will and requirements. You say, any who suffer and do works for the Lord are obeying God's will. Then let's evaluate them using the Lord Jesus' requirements. What was Jesus' most important requirement for man? You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment and the second is like to it, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. But are people doing this? I'd never yeah. thought of that. Mm. Mm. Obeying God's will means loving God with all of your heart and soul and mind. No matter how much work you do or how much you suffer, there must be no impurity or ambition, just pure devotion to satisfying and obeying God, to carrying out God's will, you must be happy to sacrifice everything for God without demand for recompense. In the face of trials and tribulation from God, you must not complain or betray him and put yourself at the mercy of God's arrangements, like Abraham, Job, and Peter. When God's trials come, you must accept with utter obedience and without complaint or question, and bear good and resounding testimony for God and this is obedience to God's will. Given those demands, it should be obvious whether or not we are people who truly obey the Heavenly Father's will. We see many capable of suffering, doing work and sacrifice in the Lord's name. But in their suffering and sacrifice, there's personal ambition and desire. They seek to enter the kingdom of heaven 
Is this not using and defrauding God? How is this practicing the truth to satisfy God? But there's an even bigger tragedy going on. Although the religious pastors and elders often work and preach in their churches and outwardly appear to do good acts, and yet when Almighty God does the work of judgment in the last days to protect their own influence and their position and their income, they wildly judge and they wildly condemn profane Almighty God and try to stop people from seeking the true way. Doesn't this make them enemies of God? How is this any different from the crimes of the Pharisees who resisted the Lord Jesus? These facts are enough to prove that people have no knowledge of God, that people's satanic nature remains, and people haven't gained truth as life. Even those who can suffer, labor, and sacrifice for God do so to barter with Him. They believe in God with the aim of gaining blessings for themselves. Such people are not practicing God's words at all and do not care for God's will. They're not testaments of obedience and love for God. How could such people be obeying God's will? And how could they be qualified to enter the kingdom of heaven and gain the way of everlasting life? Let's read a passage from Almighty God. I decide the destination of each man not on the basis of age, seniority, amount of suffering, or least of all the degree of misery, but on whether they possess truth. There's no other choice but this. You must realize that all those who do not follow the will of God will be punished. This is an immutable fact. God decides the destination of each man not on the basis of how much work he does or suffering he undergoes, but on the basis of whether he possesses truth, practices God's word, and obeys God's will. Because only those who obey God's will can enter the kingdom of heaven and gain eternal life. This is decided by God's righteous disposition and cannot be changed. So, we all need to reflect on the path we've taken to belief in God. Why, while we believe in and follow God, do we also sin and resist God? It's caused entirely by the sinful nature hidden within man. With man's sinful nature, it's very difficult to truly obey and love God. Thus, man's sinful nature makes it hard to avoid trying to barter and gain blessings while sacrificing for God. And man's sinful nature creates complaints and betrayal and negativity in man when faced with the trials of God. So, with man's sinful nature, how can he become someone who obeys God's will? How can he become holy? It's completely impossible. For man to truly obey God's will and become holy, the problem of his sinful nature must be solved. If people don't accept Almighty God's work of judgment and chastisement, then they will never be approved by God. If they don't experience God's work of judgment in the last days, they will never receive the truth, achieve dispositional change, or be after God's heart. That is a fact that no one could ever deny. Thank God. I understand more. Suffering, works, and sacrifice aren't the same as obeying God's will. Obeying God's will requires practicing God's words and following God's commandments. We used to focus on works and sacrifice, and we didn't seek God's will or practice His words. I can see we have a long way to go to obey God's will. Right. Now I understand. If we want to truly follow God's will, it's going to take more than effort on our part. We have to accept Almighty God's work of judgment, become holy, receive salvation, and gain the truth as life, to get the way of everlasting life, and truly obey God's will. That's right. Our thoughts on obeying God's will were too simple. We thought suffering and working was obeying God's will. 
Now I see that to be someone who obeys God's will, I have to accept the judgment before Christ's seat. Then I'll understand the truth and have real knowledge of God. When people have truth as life, they no longer sin or oppose and betray God. That's how one can truly obey and love God. Those are the people who truly obey God's will. God's work is really so practical. Yeah. Yeah. Thank, Thank God. God. Yeah. Without today's fellowship, we'd still be living in our imaginations, thinking we were obeying God's will, waiting to enter the kingdom of heaven. Yeah. It seems our ambitions and desires interfere with our belief. So how can we enter the kingdom of heaven um, without practicing God's word? Right. We can only be purified and enter the kingdom of heaven if we accept Almighty God's work of judgment. If we don't accept Almighty God's work of judgment and purification in the last days and continue to seek as we did before, ending up without God's approval, we'll be out of luck with nothing to show for our effort. Mm, right. right. From this fellowship, I understand. Although we've suffered and worked and have sacrificed, our sinful, satanic natures haven't been cleansed. Our selfish desires interfere with our faith, and we struggle for rewards, crowns, and to enter the kingdom of heaven, which means we aren't obeying God's will and aren't qualified to enter the kingdom of heaven. We must accept Almighty God's work of judgment and chastisement and receive God's way of eternal life in the last days to be those who obey God's will and enter the kingdom of heaven.